In this video, we are going to set up Kali Linux to access the Virtual Hacking Labs lab environment. We will be installing VMware Workstation Player on Windows. VMware Workstation Player can be downloaded for free from the VMware website. As you can see on the desktop, I already installed VMware Workstation Player and downloaded the Virtual Hacking Labs pre-installed virtual machine for VMware. Downloads for the virtual machine are included with your membership and can be downloaded from the VHL website. The VMware Workstation installation process is very simple and self-explanatory. It basically involves clicking the Next button a few times. Before we can run the virtual machine with VMware Workstation, we must extract the archive that contains the virtual machine files. Running the virtual machine from the zip archive without extracting it results in errors. To start the virtual machine, we need to open the VMX file by double clicking it. This will open the virtual machine in VMware Workstation. This will take us to the Kali Linux login screen. As you can see here, we can log in with the default credentials. The username and password are both Kali. For obvious reasons, it is recommended to change the default password. To access the Virtual Hacking Labs lab environment, we need to use the Fortinet SSL VPN client, which is pre-installed on the VHL virtual machine. You can find the VPN client on the desktop. To start a VPN client, go to the folder on the desktop and then to the 64-bit folder. Inside this folder, you can find a binary file named 40 Client SSL VPN. From here, you can enter the server address in the server field along with your VPN credentials, then click the Connect button to connect to the VPN. Instead of entering the server address manually every time you connect to the VPN, you can also use connection profiles. The VPN client already has a few pre-configured connection profiles that you can use to connect to the labs. If your server is not in the list of connection profiles, you can create it manually. You can do this by clicking the settings button and then the plus sign button. This will create a new connection profile. Enter the server address that you received by email or in the Credentials tab in the My Account section on the website. The port number is always port 443. Under the Global Settings, you can also check the Keep Connection Alive Until Manually Stopped option. This option reconnects the VPN client automatically to the lab network in case of a disconnect. Finally, we click the Done button to save the connection profile. The newly created connection profile is now available in the connection drop-down menu. Select the connection profile for your server and enter the credentials that you received by email or from the My Account section on the website. Then click the connect button to connect with the VPN environment. If all went well, the status should now display done or running. This means that we are successfully connected to the lab network. The lab access credentials you received also include the lab number. The lab number determines the address of the reset panel and the IP ranges of the vulnerable lab machines. If you're assigned to lab 1, you can reach the reset panel on 10.11.10.10. The reset panel contains the IP addresses of all lab machines that are available to you. On the reset panel, you can start the lab machines and reset them back to their default original state. It is recommended to do this before starting a new lab machine. You can also reset the lab machine after completing it. With the ifconfig or ipa command, we can see that a VPN network interface has been created. 
The IP address on this interface is used to communicate with the lab machines, for example, to receive refer shells from compromised machines. With the following command, we can run a quick Nmap scan to test the connection to the lab machines. As we can see, we got scan results for the lab machine with IP address 10.11.1.2. From this point, you can move on to the practical part of the penetration testing course and hack your way into the vulnerable lab machines. In addition, I would like to mention that the Virtual Hacking Labs website provides a lab dashboard where you can find hints and related courseware for the beginner and advanced lab machines. This is useful if you get stuck and need some help to move forward. Furthermore, there is also a Student Managed Discord channel that you can join. A link can be found in the FAQ section on the website. Should you encounter problems when configuring your virtual machine or the VPN, you can check the troubleshooting topics in the FAQ section on the website. Here you can find solutions for the most common VPN issues. I wish you best of luck with the Virtual Hacking Labs penetration testing course and I hope you will enjoy it and learn a lot.